In a recent broadcast, Tucker Carlson expressed concerns about the FBI's handling of the January 6th investigation. He particularly questioned why the individual who planted pipe bombs near the Capitol that day remains at large. Carlson, along with his guest J. Michael Waller, speculated that the intelligence community might be involved, given the lack of progress. Waller, who was at the Capitol on January 6th, noted an unexpected absence of security measures such as hurricane fencing and a significant police presence, despite the extensive planning for the protest. Don't miss. Why was there a lack of typical security measures at the Capitol on January 6th, despite prior warnings? Who is responsible for the inadequate police presence and preparation on January 6th? Could the intelligence community have had a role in the events of January 6th, including the pipe bombings? If January 6th is going to be your biggest case, why would you ignore the pipe attempted pipe bombings on Capitol Hill that day? What is that? I don't know. They just had a FBI just put out a statement the other day about the Unabomber being busted 29 years ago. So they're bragging about one single case from a generation ago, and they can't even find someone who was caught on camera supposedly putting, you know, pipe bombs at the RNC and the DNC. It seems pretty clear that was the intel agencies doing that. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that's possible? I would have thought it was crazy. I was I was at the Capitol that day. I was on the Senate side, so I live on Capitol Hill. And I thought, well, I'm just going to walk over. And I was kind of bummed because, you know, our country is going to change forever now. And I'm... I was kind of bummed because our country is going to change forever now, feeling a profound sense of sorrow and worry about what lies ahead. Major shifts in the United States might erode the core principles and the cherished American way of life. We thought, well, let's just go one last time and see real Americans. Let's just go one last time and see real Americans. The yearning to connect with everyday patriotic citizens is paramount. It's about the significance of being among fellow Americans who uphold shared beliefs and values rooted deeply in the democratic principles of our community. You know, and yeah. just, so we just went, because I've been to tons of these different protests. I've been to tons of these different protests. The legacy of active engagement in civic affairs is profound upholding traditional values while participating in democratic practices and voicing personal views forms the cornerstone of conservative ideology. And I know the Capitol Police really well because they're my neighbors. I know the Capitol Police really well because they're my neighbors. Fostering personal relationships and nurturing trust in local law enforcement are key. Conservatives emphasize the significance of community bonds and uphold respect for law enforcement, viewing them as integral pillars of the community. Yes. And we were three blocks behind the leaders of the group because we just happened to walk into it on. We were three blocks behind the leaders of the group because we just happened to walk into it. Engaging in events voluntarily and peacefully, many individuals present on January 6th aimed to advocate for their cause without any intention of resorting to violence. On uh, Constitution Avenue, and I thought something's wrong. The hurricane fence is gone. There are no canine units for the Capitol Police. There's no Capitol Police visibility at all. And just followed the crowd right up to the Capitol. And it was a pro-police crowd. And there was no trouble. It was a pro-police crowd and there was no trouble. The majority of the crowd maintained a peaceful demeanor. They empathized with the democratic belief that supporting law enforcement is essential and understood, but isolated incidents of violence do not define the whole group. Until it was either the Capitol Police or the DC Metro Police who started firing tear gas and flashbangs into the crowd, you know, 50, 60, 80 feet away from where there was trouble. And we didn't know there was trouble up in the front. We didn't know there was trouble up in the front. Reflecting on the bewilderment and ignorance surrounding the earlier violence, it's clear that many involved were oblivious to the rising tensions. Most participants remained peaceful, unaware of the situation's escalation. What do you think that was? Why, why was there no, on the day of a planned protest, that every law enforcement and intel agency in the United States had, had conference calls about for mm -hmm. weeks. Why was there no hurricane fencing or canine units? I can't speak about the canine units, but the hurricane fencing, it turns out, was taken down. But there was no police presence at all. There was no police presence at all. The authorities have faced significant backlash for their inadequate security measures, which many view as a clear failure in handling the situation effectively. This has sparked conservative critiques, highlighting government inefficiency and a glaring lack of preparedness. There was no manpower. In fact, on the way to, to, the, to the march, I walked past Capitol Police headquarters, had a chat with a Capitol policeman. I had a chat with a Capitol policeman. 
regular interactions between citizens and police should reflect democratic values of law and order. The police should be seen as approachable and integral members of the community. Who was putting on his shin guards, and he had a billy club, and I was admiring his billy club because it was an old school kind. And uh, they were really relaxed. Even the Capitol Police were relaxed. They were Even the Capitol Police were relaxed. The police anticipated a tranquil event with no inkling of potential unrest. Despite underlying anxiety, most attendees harbored peaceful intention. We're not prepared. Yeah, they had no idea. No. Now, some in the Capitol Police, I think, did have an idea. One yeah. Them, Yogananda Pittman, who was in charge of intelligence for the Capitol Police. But the Capitol Police doesn't have an intelligence unit. They get their stuff from the FBI and the Secret Service and Homeland Security. So she got what was being uh, supplied by the federal executive branch agencies, but she didn't tell her chief. In a gripping segment, Tucker Carlson took aim at the FBI's handling of the January 6th events, especially questioning the unresolved attempted pipe bombings. He was joined by J. Michael Waller, who pointed out the inconsistencies and surprising lack of police readiness despite warnings about the planned protest. Waller, sharing his first-hand observations from the Capitol, highlighted the peculiar absence of security and suggested possible intelligence community involvement. This conversation shines a light on the unanswered questions of January 6th, urging a deeper investigation into all incidents of that day. The discussion between Tucker Carlson and J. Michael Waller delves into a profound skepticism towards the intelligence community and law enforcement. This widespread distrust can profoundly impact the public psyche particularly among those who uphold democratic values and the integrity of institutions. When trust falters, it can lead to disillusionment or even fuel conspiracy theories. Examining how Carlson frames events and the official narratives can reveal much about the audience's beliefs and attitudes. The media's power to mold reality and evoke emotional responses is a critical area of analysis. Concerns often arise regarding perceived failures in law enforcement and government responsibility. These concerns are typically critical of agency negligence or incompetence, clashing with conservative ideals of robust governance and public safety. This scenario brings forth anxiety and fear about the country's future, reflecting a collective unease among individuals who feel the state is changing beyond their control. We must explore how these fears influence personal and group actions, potentially leading to protests or a critical stance against government narratives. The concept of responsibility and the urgency for action also emerges here. But analyzing the motivations behind individuals feeling compelled to address these issues themselves, often through significant, sometimes controversial actions, ties into the broader theme of finding meaning and purpose in one's life. What do you think?